Hello there, good evening and welcome to the National News Broadcast. I'm Niket Karuna Ratna. And I'm Hesha and Ali. Let's have a look at the headlines for tonight. All preparations are in place for the presidential election. The Election Commission requests voters to cast their votes early. A credible telecast of results, this time too by the national television. Security of the election to be under a special police force. The president says the official announcement freeing the country from bankruptcy will come soon. Economists say the successful completion of the debt restructuring process has become a special turning point. Commissioner of Examinations assures there will be no injustice to the children who appeared at the Grade 5 scholarship examination. Israel attacks terror targets in southern Lebanon by air. On to those and other stories in detail and your top story for tonight is the election commission requests the voters to cast their votes tomorrow as early as possible. Now the chairman of the election commission RMAL Ratnayake informs the voters to place their confidence on the election commission. Chairman of the election commission RMAL Ratnayake said that voting will commence from 7 a.m. tomorrow. He said that therefore the voters should go to the relevant polling center with their official poll card and valid identity card as early as possible and cast their votes. He said that voters should not take their mobile phones to the polling center. He said that if any voter has not yet received a poll card, he or she should enter the election commission website and get a QR code to obtain a copy of the official poll card. He said that even without the poll card, people can vote proving their identity at the polling center. He said that voters can cast their vote by marking a figure one in front of the preferred name of the candidate and the symbol. He said that if anyone likes to cast a preferential vote, he or she can put the figure one as their vote and number two and three in front of another two candidates as the second and third preferential votes. He said that instead of number one, one can mark a sign of a cross in front of the preferred candidate. The chairman of the election commission said that if anyone uses the cross, only the cross should be there. He said that no one can mark the sign of the cross and mark number two and three as preferential votes. He said that such ballot papers will be rejected. He added that in case of marking more than three numbers, such ballot papers will also be rejected. He further said that if there are unnecessary signs or sketches, the ballot paper will be rejected. He said that the election commission requests the voters to have full confidence on the commission. He added that there may be fake information published on social media. Voters should not be misled by such information and they only should have their trust on the election commission since it has very well planned this process, he said. As the nation is gearing up for one of the most crucial presidential elections in Sri Lankan history, the nation is eager to know about the preparations and some updates. So joining us tonight is the additional Commissioner of Elections, Mr. Siva Subramaniam Achadan, to shed some light on the election proceedings. Welcome on board, sir. Hi, good evening. Thank you very much for invi uh, inviting me today. Very good evening. So the very first question would be, sir, could you sa sa say some information about the latest updates and the preparations ongoing for the election as of now? Right. Actually, all uh, arrangements have been set up and the ballot boxes and the ballot papers and all documents have, uh, have been dispatched to the uh, relevant polling station and the all uh, poll officers, including the chief presiding officers now, uh, station in the uh, designated uh, polling station and we are ready to start the poll by tomorrow morning 7 o'clock and voters can come and cast their votes uh, from 7 a.m. onwards by tomorrow. So could you guide us through the correct procedure on how we can cast a vote? Okay, well, uh, as our chairman requested, uh, please go to the polling station early in the morning. Don't wait until the last minute to avoiding the uh, queues and the delays in the line so uh, there is a possibility to cast your vote from morning 7 to evening 4 o'clock but uh, don't wait until the last minute go to the polling station uh, designated polling station by early morning around 7 or close to that time and please take your official poll card with you and the identity documents uh, which is uh, uh, announced by the election commission 
uh, and accepted by the poll staffs you take that and identify yourself and cast your vote the uh, the procedure of casting vote is um, you know uh, as per the regulation to cast your vote the voter have to mark one uh, against the, uh, their pre preferred uh, candidate and if he really wanted to go for next preference vote he can mark two and three or otherwise if you are willing to mark only one vote for the candidate they can put uh, cross uh, no any other mark will accept it don't put any other marks uh, definitely if you put cross and two three will reject so don't do that one if you have only one word you use only cross if you have uh, two three preferences put one two and three thank you very much sir and any final remarks any message as the additional commissioner to the nation yes uh, we are expecting all the uh, voters as well as the candidates and the political parties and the followers please respect the regulation and support election commission to conduct the peace and free fair election Thank you so much. Thank you very much, sir, for joining us on board tonight at such a crucial time. And it is very reassuring to know of your efforts to ensure a very smooth and successful presidential election 2024. <laughs> Moving on, according to the returning officers, all arrangements are in place for the successful conducting of the 2024 presidential election by now. And the ballot boxes are being transported to the concerned centres right at this moment. 1,765,331 voters have become eligible to cast their votes in the presidential election from Colombo district and 1,204 voting centers are in operation in the district. Ballot papers were taken to the concerned places were completed in the morning today and 165 counting centers have been set up and the main centers are Royal College Colombo and DS Senanaika College. Distribution of ballot boxes for the voting centers in the Gampaha district started today morning centering the CNA National College of Education and the premises at Weyanguda. 1,912 voting centers are in operation for 13 electorates in the Gampaha district. 1,881,129 voters have been registered in the district for the presidential election this year. There are 735 voting centers in the Kalutaro district. Ballot boxes are being taken to the centers by now. In the meantime, Polonara District 2 arrangements have been finalized for the 2024 presidential election. 292 voting centers are in operation for 351,302 voters. Ballot boxes are being issued for the concerned centers in the district from Polonara Royal Central School. Issuing of voting cards and ballot boxes for voting centers in the Kegal district are being done from Kegal Girls School and Swarnajayanti Mahavidyalaya. 577 voting centers are in operation <laughs> in the district. Three hundred and thirty voting centers in the Matli district started receiving ballot boxes this morning. A total number of four hundred and twenty nine thousand nine hundred and ninety one voters have been qualified to cast their votes in the district in this year's election. In Monragala district, issuing of ballot boxes commenced from the Monragala Royal National School for 383 voting centres in the district. The number of voters eligible for voting is 399,166. 532 voting centres are in operation in the Nurelia district. Ballot boxes were transported to those centres this morning. And according to the returning officer, Nandana Galabada, all arrangements for the conducting of voting have been completed in the district. Returning officer Chandana Tenekon says that all arrangements have been completed in the Kandy district for the presidential election this year. 890 voting centers are in operation in 13 electorates in the district. <laughs> the 
And in the meantime, transporting of ballot boxes to 636 voting centres in the Andhradhapura district commenced from the Andhradhapura central school premises this morning. According to the returning officer K. G. Ranjit Vimalasurya, who is in charge of the voting process, all arrangements have been made. Ballot boxes were carried to the voting centres in Baunia in the Wani district this morning. This is being done from Siva Prakasham Girls School in Baunia. There are 152 voting centres in operation. Carrying of ballot boxes to the voting centre in Batiklo district was started from the Batiklo Hindu College grounds. In the district, a total number of 449,686 voters have been registered in the district for this year's presidential election. Issuing of ballot boxes for 530 voting centres in Badula district commenced from the Badula Mahavidyalaya. 705,772 voters have been registered in nine polling divisions. And in the meantime, 410 voting centres are in operation in the Hambantada district, while a number of more than 520,000 voters are eligible to cast votes in the presidential election. Five hundred and twenty six voting centers have been set up in Mathura district. The main counting center will be Mathura Rahula College premises. Six hundred and eighty six thousand hundred and seventy five voters will be exercising their franchise in the district. The number of voters in the Gold District stands at 903,163. 715 voting centres have been set up in the district. Ballot boxes have been carried by boats to the voting centre set up in the Madhu Island in the Madhu River of the Balapite electorate in Gold District. All preparations for the presidential election have been completed in Trincomalee district. A total of 318 polling stations have been set up within the district. 555,432 voters will use their vote in 528 polling stations in Ampara district. Also, there are 515 polling stations in Jaffna district. Meanwhile, the ballot boxes were transported to islands via the sea route with helicopters. Seven hundred polling stations have been set up in Ratnapura district. Ballot papers and ballot boxes were transported to all centres by midday today. Apadavka di Madhyatuna Sielu Parshan, a Apadavan Sidu Yeheki Stan, Sielu Mogakim Niladarin Natara, Bedaduna. Ativi Heki, Apadata Tuan, Una Mikakyatati, Metivani Pavati Matapit Kulanka. Meanwhile, the transportation of ballot boxes to all polling centers in Putlam district has been completed. Less than 19 hours remain for the 2024 presidential election. 17.1 million registered voters have been qualified to cast their votes this year. The following survey will be about the registered voters of this year's presidential election. 17,140,354 voters have been registered for the presidential election this year. A large number of them come from the Gampaha district, amounting to 1,881,129. The number of voters registered in the Colombo district is 1,765,351. There are five districts where the number of voters has exceeded 1 million and are Gampaha, Colombo, Kaluthara, Kandy and Kurunagala. In 11 districts, the number of voters are less than 1 million but exceed 500,000. These districts are Nuarelia, Gaul, Mathara, Hambantara, Jaffna, Digamadulla, Puttalam, Anuradhapura, Badulla, Ratnapura and Kegol. 
Matale, Varni, Batiklo, Trincomalee, Polonnaruwa and Monaragala districts have less than 500,000 registered voters. The Varni district is the district which includes the least number of registered voters. There are 306,081. The number of registered voters is 315,925 in the Trincomalee district and the number of registered voters in the Polonnaruwa district is 351,302. The Monaragala district has 399,166 registered voters while the number in the Matale district stands at 429,991. A number of 449,686 have been registered in the Batiklo district. Maskelia polling division of the Nuarelia district becomes the area with the highest number of registered voters with 340,646 eligible. The number that exceeds the number of registered voters in the Wanni and Trincomalee districts. More than 200,000 voters are registered in the polling divisions of Homagama and Kadwila of Kalambo district. The Kites district of Jaffna records the minimum number of registered voters and the number is 25,533. Meanwhile, the polling divisions where the number of voters does not exceed 50,000 are Kites, Jaffna, Point Pedro, Udipidi, Kankasanthure in the Jaffna district, the Kandy polling division in the Kandy district and Colombo West in the Colombo district. And on to more stories here at home, according to the Department of Meteorology Light, rainy conditions may occur in several areas of the country. According to the Meteorological Department, light showers are expected tomorrow in the western and suburban provinces and Kandy, Nuralia, Gaul and Mathura districts. Thunder showers may occur in few areas in the eastern and Uva province in the evening and normal weather will prevail in the rest of the country. Founder of the Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna, former Minister Basil Rajapaksa has left the island. The airport sources stated that he left the country this morning. Meanwhile, the Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna has suspended three party members. They are namely Pavitra Vanyarachi, Rohita Abegunavardhana, and SM Chandrasena. The General Secretary of the Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna, Attorney at Law Sagar Kariyavasam, says that their party membership was suspended since they extended their support to a presidential candidate of another party instead of the Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna's own candidate. In the meantime, President Ranil Vikramasinghe emphasized that discussions with the private bondholders have successfully concluded, marking a significant step in freeing the country from bankruptcy. He further stated that an official acknowledgement of Sri Lanka's recovery from bankruptcy is expected soon, along with a swift implementation of plans to advance the country. The president made these remarks during a meeting with the executive committee of the Chamber of Young Lankan Entrepreneurs at the presidential secretariat today. The president further emphasized that his goal is to rapidly shift the country towards an export-driven economy. The strategic plan required for the transformation have already been developed, with agricultural modernization being a key component. Getting to more international trading and more exports, it's the only way for us to survive now. Otherwise, we can't survive. We have just finished the negotiations now with the bondholders also. So next step is to ensure that a bankruptcy status is withdrawn. Thereafter, we have to work hard. We have finished the easy part, no? Since we are going into export economy, all directions have to change, all systems have to change. And also, we are looking at areas like modernizing agriculture, smart agriculture. I mean, many new areas to be opened up. We have to go out and compete. And it's the survival of the fittest. Once you make up your mind there, we will see how, how we go along. There will be a lot of restructuring of government done afterwards. Our first one was to get over the bankruptcy. So now that we've done the negotiations, question of them recognizing it maybe in the next month or so, come back and those seats will have a overlook, overlook of it. And then thereafter, we have to earn a keep our concessions on payments will be excess of 10 billion. Some say maybe even 15. We will only know in the afternoon, 2 o'clock, they are sent in the state. 
Professor Sirima Labe Ratna says that the successful completion of the debt restructuring process has become a special turning point in the economic history of the country. He expressed these views explaining the future benefits of debt restructuring mechanism. Senior Professor Sirima Labe Ratna of the Colombo University said that the news about the completion of the debt restructuring of the country is important. He added that this has become an important turning point in the economic history, especially considering the agreement reached with the commercial debtors. He pointed out that Sri Lanka has taken an important step forward to end bankruptcy and all limitations for Sri Lanka so far will be removed henceforth as a result. And this provides the strength to stabilize exchange rates and the foreign reserves of the central bank. He stressed that this step includes a basic condition that will upgrade the ratings from the bottom towards the top and it carries further importance since finalizing restructuring becomes specific. Yesterday's announcement is the culmination of a long process. I know there is a lot of political discourse about the need to renegotiate the DSA. You can't renegotiate a DSA, which is a debt sustainability analysis. Now, yesterday's announcement basically is an in principle agreement with the commercial creditors of the debt restructuring. The real coming out of bankruptcy is that we are under what you call a selective credit rating. And it will probably take a few more months uh, to complete the whole process, after which there will be a rating action on us. Now, getting an investable rating is fundamental to our economic future. It is very important that our debt carrying capacity is increased before 2028 so that we regain access to the international markets. So the most important criteria is that we have to increase economic growth. And that will require productivity enhancing investment to come in. And I can tell you, I have had a ringside view of the difficulty of getting investment into Sri Lanka. Ever since 2020, most investors have been selling out of Sri Lanka. Our current status of selective default is a big deterrent for major money to come in. So what has been achieved yesterday is a huge game changer in the path to debt sustainability. We have to move forward because the most important thing is to grow the economy. And if we get our rating back, it will lift a huge cloud that is inhibiting Sri Lanka. And these things are virtuous. So one builds on what other business sentiment will improve. The negativity that is attached to Sri Lanka internationally will reduce and hopefully we will be able to come out of this crisis stronger. Meanwhile, Commissioner General of Examinations Amit Jaya Sundara says that no students who sat for the Grade 5 scholarship examination will be subjected to any kind of discrimination. He stressed this fact, expressing his views regarding the question paper alleged to have been leaked before the examination. Commissioner General of Examinations Amit Jasundara says that they held lengthy discussions with the Examination Control Board on both Monday and Tuesday in this connection. He said that they acted according to the fundamental reports of the investigation teams and that all the investigative reports and other information received by the department have been sent to the CID to continue further investigations. He said that parents should not have any doubt regarding this investigation and he said that according to the CID report, a decision will be taken to mete out the justice to each and every child. The executive director of Patrol Organization, Rohan Etiarachi, explained the process of counting of ballots and the electoral mechanism of the presidential election. He made these remarks while speaking to the national television. The Elections Commission will uh, count all the ballot papers uh, across the country in a district level basis. Uh, the entire country is district. They have a number of counting places. In the first round, they will look at your vote, and if someone get 50 plus 1, then it's, uh, as usually, uh, the Elections Commission will uh, announce the winner if someone get 50 plus 1. The winner will elect at first round if they get 50 plus 1 vote. If not, the Election Commission has to go for a second count also. 
uh, before they go to the second count, they will announce the first count result to the public and they will look at the second, third preference. So what, what they will do is they will prepare the list from with the highest number of the votes, those who get highest number of in this 30, uh, out of these 38 candidates, and they will take the two main candidates, those who get the highest number. So those two will be the, the winners end of the day. And they will look at the rest of the 36 candidates, whether those 36 candidates, ballot papers, if people mark their second and third preference on those can on those ballot papers, they will look at whether those uh, second preference are goes to the first two runners. If yes, they will calculate accordingly, and finally they will decide the winner. So you can trust the electoral system in this country, and you need to trust the elections management body. I mean, they will do their job properly. The political parties also can. Uh, send their representative for the counting places, at least five uh, representatives for each counting places. So, uh, in addition, the uh, elections observer group also can they send their observers group. I think the elections commission's official will do the needful. So, but be as a citizen, so we can be alert on that, but we need to trust the system. And we, are, we, are, we as observer group, having long-standing uh, experience in this election process, we, we are really confident with the elections management body. They will, the, they will do the needful, and they will count properly your ballot on 21st midnight. Now, developing entrepreneurship abilities in line with the present trend can be useful for anyone. This is all about an entrepreneurship which will be able to contribute to the economy of the country, both locally and foreign. A large number is engaged in the field of beauty culture today. Accordingly, the area of beauty parlours have also been modified. Modern Salon Institution came into being in 2005 and branches have been opened in Nigambo, Kurunagala, Kandi, Kiribatkoda, Ratnapura, Matara and Kohuala areas. Apart from these, the Modern Salon branch of Vancouver in Canada is extremely popular. According to the owner of the Salon, Sujiva Palita has been authorised to produce Modern Salon equipment. And that's all the news from home. Stay tuned for foreign news after this break. Ungal Tiramayum Kadamayamakum, Varatilurumurai and Ralam, Ungal Suralai Petri, Sindit the Paringal Sugada Ramachin, Dengu Olipirivin Tagaban Welcome back and on foreign news, the foreign media has reported that Hezbollah has fired dozens of rockets into Israel and is targeting Israeli military sites. The Israel Defense Forces says that 140 missiles were fired at Israel. Meanwhile, Israel's military says that it has launched fresh strikes in southern Lebanon. It comes after Israel carried out extensive air strikes in southern Lebanon targeting Hezbollah. Rocket launches. The Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah has vowed to inflict retribution after explosions of communication devices used by the group killed more than 30 people and injured thousands. Furthermore, he blames Israel for the deadly blast of the Hezbollah pages and radios on Tuesday and Wednesday, saying civilians were among the victims. An article for our news, Storm Boris is battering the northeast and central regions of Italy days after causing widespread flooding in the Central Europe. Meanwhile, European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen announced 10 billion euros of EU funding for affected countries. 
The European Commission President made this announcement after meeting the leaders of Poland, Czech Republic, Slovakia and Austria to discuss aid for the flood-hit region. The meeting was held in the Polish city of Wroclaw in southwestern Poland, which has been threatened by high river levels for days. More than 1,000 residents in the northeastern region of Emila Romagana have been evacuated, while towns in the central region of March reported serious flooding and disruption. Introducing Prima Kotami Korean Ramen. Let's fire it up. Welcome back after the break and on to sports news. At the start of the third day of the first test against Western New Zealand, Sri Lanka has scored 237 runs for the loss of four wickets in their second innings. The match is being played in the Gaul International Cricket Stadium. Sri Lanka scored 305 runs in the first innings. In reply, New Zealand scored 340 runs in the first innings. In the second innings, Pathum Nisanka was out for two runs as the first wicket. Dimuth Karuna Ratna scored 83 runs, recording his 38th Test half century. Dinesh Chandimal marked his 28th half century with 61 runs. At the end of the third day, both Angelo Matthews and Captain Dananjay De Silva have scored 34 runs, not out each. Sri Lanka leads 202 runs in the second innings at present. Tomorrow will be the rest day of the match due to the presidential election. Accordingly, the fourth day of play will commence on the day after tomorrow. Introducing Prima Kotami Korean Ramen. Let's fire it up. And that's all the news for tonight. Join us again at the same time tomorrow. Good night.